Okay, ice cream and overview. So ice cream is a, a soft frozen solid um, that needs to keep its form while melting slowly. So it's not a surprise that it's quite a complex mixture. Um, ice cream is a successful frozen emulsion of ice crystals, fats, sweeteners, air, and other solids. Um, over here we have ice cream at a microscopic level. Um, so our aim was to determine the highest water content of the three different types of ice cream. And our hypothesis was that if the water content in the ice cream is high, then the texture will be less smooth because the more water there is, the bigger ice crystals will be resulting in a coarser and grittier texture. The initial mass of the, of the ice cream and the beaker, and then the change in mass, and the average change in mass get a better spread of results. Now the, the average, so the change in mass was the, was the amount of water that was boiled off and evaporated during the boiling of the ice cream. The, all these results show that the ice creams with a higher final change in mass have a higher water content, which is Unfortunately, aligned with our hypothesis, but it is highly dependent on the amount of ice cream that is boiled in the experiment. So, regarding the final results of the Woolworths ice creams, um, we noticed that it had a custard base, and this custard base was indicated by the fact that it had an eggy and quite a rich smell, and by its yellow color. So, instead of using milk, they'll use milk powders, and this obviously affects the quality and overall texture and taste of the ice cream. Therefore, since, and since it had the highest water content evaporated. A common myth of taste is that your tongue is divided into specific areas um, and only in those areas can you perceive those specific tastes. But this is incorrect as um, even if you, like for example, if you dip your tongue into like a little bit of salt, you still taste salt no matter where you, um, wherever the area is touched on your tongue basically to determine um, whether temp the different temperatures of the ice cream had an actual effect on how much sweetness one could taste. Um, and our hypothesis was that ice cream eaten at higher temperatures will be perceived to be sweeter than ice cream eaten at lower temperatures. We took um, a scoop of ice cream, and we did this for each um, ice cream. We took a scoop of ice cream and tasted it at the temperature and came out of freezer. We also obviously recorded that temperature. And then um, each participant, we had five participants, had to taste it and rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, the sweetness of the ice cream. And then what we did is we used a water bath to increase the temperature of the ice cream to first 10 degrees and then 30 degrees and then 50 degrees. And we had to then obviously repeat and um, taste the ice cream again. Each okay. So basically these are the results of the so we tested, uh, we taste tested the different ice creams at nine degrees Celsius, which is when it first came out of the freezer. Negative, negative nine, sorry. And then ten degrees, thirty degrees, and fifty degrees. And then the trends are pretty similar across all the different types of ice cream. The perceived sweetness did increase. So basically, our conclusion was that the temperature of the ice cream did have an effect on the perceived sweetness level. And our hypothesis that the ice cream would be perceived as sweeter at high temperatures was uh, accepted. And there is another study that says like our sense of smell has a very big like factor on like our sense of taste. So that could have also been a factor that influenced these results. Um, so we kind of combined the chemistry and physics into one sort of investigation and. Originally, what we wanted to do was work out the energy in the phase change, but the issue with that is that ice cream being a mixture, it has different phase changes, so we couldn't actually get a specific heat, so we kind of changed our approach a little bit, and we decided to look at the actual crystals, as mentioned earlier, of the ice creams. So the, when the ice crystals form an ice cream, the two main things that affect the size of it are the sugar and the... Um, the sugar and the fat. Um. What they do is they uh, purposefully add fat and sugar to the ice creams while trying to trying to decrease the water, because our tongue can't um, detect crystals that are smaller than fifty microns. Uh, so this is what we explained. Um, 
when there's no uh, sugar and fat, the uh, crystals will clump together, so therefore there will be uh, bitter crystals, and therefore the ice cream won't be smooth. Uh, the tongue will be able to sense the crystals, whereas when sugar and fat coats the ice crystals, uh, it prevents them from, uh, from clumping. We will be looking at the melting and freezing points of each ice cream and com comparing that to the sugar and cream contents, sugar and fat contents of each ice cream. We knew that if we could compare all of the ice creams, the one with, uh, we could compare the freezing slash melting points, we could deduce which ones had the largest crystals and therefore which were the grit grittiest and then worst quality. You measure the mass of the calorimeter without the ice cream, you take a fixed scoop of the ice cream, you place it in the calorimeter, you measure that mass with the lid closed, and then you put the PASCO um, temperature probe into, um, into the ice cream with the, with the lid, but you know, what you have to do is, what we decided was, we had to keep the lid open to allow some energy into it, because otherwise with the lid closed, it just took too long. And after we had melted it and it got to room temperature, we placed it back into the freezer with the probe still in the ice cream to measure its freezing point. This function here is the graph for the freezing point, right? That's melting. Yes, melting point. And this is the freezing point. Sorry. Okay. So we just specified here the concentration of sugar in each ice cream uh, because obviously that will impact on the crystal structures. As was mentioned earlier, fats will uh, separate that, like stop that from happening. So this is the um, melting curve, and you can see here there's a steady increase in temperature from when you took the ice cream out of the freezer. And then there's a flat part, right? Um, and as we know in physics and chemistry, that is when the ice cream is absorbing energy to convert from a solid phase to a liquid phase. So that there is actually the temperature. The phase change. The, uh, that is the melting point. And that value was? It's about 0 0.8 for the was 0 0.5. 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, right? So negative 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, uh, which is weird because water is obviously zero. When uh, the crystals are larger, there's a difference in the freezing point slash melting point. So you wouldn't expect to get the same values. Uh, so then we stuck it back in the freezer, and this was the freezing um, graph, uh, function that we got. Now, um, this function is extremely similar, in fact, pretty much identical to flash freezing functions. And based off that knowledge, we um, uh, extrapolated the function uh, and did all sorts of things to figure out that this peak here is actually the freezing point. Now, it's negative three degrees Celsius, which is significantly lower, which is what you would expect to find because we said the larger the crystals, the lower the, um, the freezing slash melting point would be. The melting point should be significantly lower, and it is negative 1.8 degrees so Celsius. What was interesting was this for the, um, this one had slightly lower sugar and fat percentages per 100 grams, which is why you would expect it to be slightly lower, but still very close to um, the Madagascan. Then this is the uh, freezing function. As you can see, it's obviously very similar to um, the, the one before but uh, we were able to deduce that negative 3.8 degrees Celsius was the new freezing point. So significantly larger like crystals that were being formed. What wasn't really mentioned on the slide, but is incredibly important to note, is that it had the highest fat content. Uh, now fat um, prohibits the form formation of crystals because it saturates some of the molecules. The heating curve here, that's just an error in the data when someone bumped it. But, um, the point on this function where the gradient is uh, least steep or is uh, smallest is where we kind of deduced that the freezing point was, uh, and that was at negative 2.2 degrees Celsius, so significantly lower than the, other uh, than the other ice creams. One thing that ice cream makers try to do is they try to cool their ice cream down very fast. Um, so there's case scenarios where people use liquid nitrogen and all sorts of things to cool their ice cream because it's incredibly fast and then you get it extremely small crystals. Um, so the period uh, of that crystallization that I was showing you on the function, the smaller that is, the smaller the crystals are. So in conclusion, this is just a recap of what we already said. So the smaller the ice crystals, the smoother the ice cream will be. Uh, the more sugar and fat there is, 
the smaller the crystals will be, but the less water there is, the smaller the crystals will be. Um, looking at the ingredients, we determined that the oil will be Madagascan, Woolworths, and Country Fresh. And experimentally, we verified the theory. Uh, to, in order to do that, we plotted the heating and freezing curves for each ice cream, and uh, it basically verified the theory. So one of the things we could have done was mix um, the ice cream as it was melting so that you kind of get a more blended um, heat curve. The problem, so that was something we could have done. That was an improvement that would have been able, we should have, uh, we could have done. Cool. Any Thank questions? Are there any questions?